Um, I'd like to uh, begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to elders past and present. I would also like to extend that respect to those respects to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander peoples who are joining us today. Welcome to the ACT Region Chapter, sorry, ACT and Region Chapter of the Australian Citizen Science Association presentation by Adam Woods, Digivol, a world leader in facilitating volunteer contributions to science. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce um, Adam Woods. Adam is currently the Digivol online coordinator at the Australian Museum. Having spent more than 10 years working in community engagement and environment, environmental management, he's witnessed firsthand the potential for citizen science to be a valuable tool for education, engagement and science. Um, captivated by the knowledge held within the community, Adam saw the need uh, to embrace and record this knowledge, to provide land managers and researchers with more data to guide decisions across the you know, the future of Australia's biodiversity. Adam spent two years working um, on the, the Australian Museum's Frog ID um, before moving to the Digivol, to Digivol in May 2020. Adam, over to you. Thank you for the kind words, John, um, and thanks for the introduction. Um, I'd also like to pay my respects and acknowledge uh, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation as the first people and traditional custodians of the land and waterways on which the Australian Museum stands, and also acknowledge the Aboriginal people of the Darawal Nation from which I am uh, fortunate enough to be presenting from tonight here in Wollongong on the south coast of New South Wales. I was going to spend the first couple of minutes introducing myself, um, but John has already done that. So um, I would just like to highlight that um, if, there are a few familiar names in the audience and faces, um, but anyone who knows me knows I'm really passionate about citizen science and I really love um, learning more about it, um, getting better as a practitioner in citizen science um, and hearing more from our volunteers in particular. Um, volunteers and their stories just fascinate me. Um, so being in citizen science is a really fortunate opportunity for myself um, and I really love it. So apologies if I ramble on a little bit tonight. I do get a little bit excited and go down a few tangents, but um, I'll try my best to stay on track tonight. And um, of course, if you've got any questions, happy to stick around and chat for as long as it takes at the end um, to answer everything that is asked. Um, so to kick it off, uh, the Australian Museum has more than 21 million specimens. Um, it's, it's quite a collection. Uh, but only 1% of that collection is actually on display to the public. So across our museum, you only see 1% of the total um, collection that we have. I guess the museum is like a, a library for biodiversity. Um, you can see things on site. Uh, there's a lot of digital records um, and there's also loans, um, which are critical to the operations of the museum and, and the research that it's involved in. Um, but um, in enough, less than 30% 30 30 of the Australian Museum collection is digitised. Um, so that led to a few questions being asked. And, and about 10 years ago, the Australian Museum with Paul Clemens had started a collaboration with the Atlas of Living Australia um, to start this ambitious project called Digivol, um, looking to, I guess, digitise more of the Australian Museum's collection. So those who are familiar with Digivol would be really um, familiar with this front page that you can see here. This is what the website looks like um, and the tools that are available for volunteers to use, um, but also for institutions. Um, and what this looked like 10 years ago is very different to now. It's evolved, it's grown, and it's become multi-purpose. Um, so it really is, it's grown into a, quite a large crowdsource crowdsourcing platform um, for a range of institutions to uh, transcribe information. I guess that term crowdsourcing is a little bit strange as well. So I, just for those who might be unfamiliar with some of the terminology, um, 
Crowdsourcing is generally a, an open call for voluntary assistance from a large group of individuals. That's the technical definition. Um, but I think citizen science kind of has a, a lot of definitions and a lot of ways of looking at it and perspectives. So um, rather than get tied up in the terminology, um, you might see me use the term citizen science and crowdsourcing interchangeably tonight. Um, like I mentioned, a number of institutions you did Digivol, um, the Australian Museum being the main collaborators and instigators of the project early on, it's very important to the digitization of our collection. But any institution can use Digivol and, and transcribe their data, um, whether that's across um, their own collections, herbariums or um, camera trap images, which we'll, we'll touch on a little bit later on. So why Digivol continues to exist has kind of evolved for the Australian Museum. The Australian Museum is now in the second year of its 10 year project that we call the Collection Enhancement Project. Um, there's three broad goals in relation to that project and that's the registration and digitization of 2 million specimens over the next 10 years um, across natural history and cultural collections. Um, there's also high resolution imaging and, and 3D scanning taking place um, on particularly high valued specimens. Um, and it's the enhancement and enrichment of natural history and cultural collection specimens through targeted research or additional information capture. So some of the collection and, and their labels in particular um, holds data that hasn't necessarily been unlocked um, for the research community and hopefully the collection enhancement project will help that happen. So why, why are we interested in um, driving this project? Uh, I guess the main purpose is to um, create better access to the Australian Museum's collections for stakeholders, um, whether they be internal or external. Um, engagement op opportunities exist across all the collections. So as we start to digitise them, um, the opportunity to expose and talk about these collections will be um, much greater. Uh, digital repatriation of First Nations material, um, substitute for objects in the event of loss. So if, if something happens to the collection, we have a digital record available. Um, although it won't replace the specimen itself, at least we'll have records of what we had um, to fulfill audit tracking and inventory obligations. There's the state government coming into it and assist in preserving the collection through limiting handling and associated with the collection access. So if we can provide data and information to people that means they don't have to go into the collection and, and take out specimens, then the specimens are likely to exist for much longer. So how does Digivol um, contribute and work with the collection enhancement project? I guess there's two elements to that. Um, we have a lab on site where volunteers visit the museum and they um, unpin specimens and they take photos of them. Um, and all this becomes data that goes into our um, the Australian Museum database. And then there's the online component, which is what we're really here to talk about tonight, um, which is the transcription, transcription of labels and um, registered data um, that the Australian Museum has. We have a lot of information um, that yeah, is sitting in old volumes that we would like to unlock and, and make available for researchers. So I guess there's, if you were going to simplify the, the process that Digivol goes through, I think these five steps sum it up quite nicely. Um, so initially, if you're an institution such as ourselves and you wanted to put some content on Digivol online, um, you would be talking about setting up an expedition with a template and a tutorial. And anyone who's been through that process knows that's the hardest bit. Um, then you upload batches of images to the Digivol website and, and the project is created. Um, that's when that is then open to the public and citizen scientists digitize the images according to the specifications of the institution running the project. And then there's a quality control where experts check the information for accuracy and consistency. Um, and then 
there's obviously the option to download and export the data um, to use it within your own systems um, and, and share it more broadly um, with the wider community. Um, so there's three, I guess, key areas that Digivol um, operates under. The first one we'll talk about is specimen labels, um, mainly because that is the major focus of our own digitization at the museum. Um, we have a lot of insect labels from entomology. We have a lot of rock and mineral labels. Um, we have a lot of, uh, well, other, other institutions have a lot of plant labels and herbarium specimens. Um, but essentially the specimen labels allows us to digitize large volumes of data um, and makes it cataloged and searchable. Um, it also divides that data into relevant fields as well. So if we use something like OCR, um, it can transcribe the data, but it doesn't necessarily break it into the fields that we want to um, put it in when we move it to another database. So another, an example of a project on Digibowl Online, this is what a, a, a basic um, insect label transcription looks like. Um, you can see there that we're transcribing all the text. Um, we're collecting locality information, who collected it, um, dates and other miscellaneous information, um, sometimes how it was collected, whether it was in a, in a trap or in a um, lamp or something like that. Um, but also, yeah, there's an opportunity to um, map the locations a bit more specifically as well using um, a built-in toggle there within the template. So you can see there that we can capture quite a bit of information from a single um, label on an insect specimen. Um, there's also our field diaries element. Uh, this is handwritten text generally. Um, it can also be text associated with maps and other illustrations, as you can see from the images there. Um, but you can also look at um, drawing out the biodiversity data from, from that text as well. So a lot of these texts actually hold some really interesting biodiversity information. Um, and we also create digital records of journals and registers um, that otherwise are, are still um, sitting there as handwritten records. Um, it also preserves the content of past record keeping methods for the future. So for us here at the museum, the main field diaries that we were, or the main type of handwritten text we work in is a register, um, the old museum registers, which show every single specimen coming into the museum uh, and capturing some of that data is, is really helpful um, for the research being undertaken on those collections. So what that might look like, um, here's a good example of a, a diary from William Brewster, um, a well-known ornithologist. Um, you can see there, there's just one big box there that allows us to transcribe every bit of text. Um, but just below that, there's a, a little few extra boxes. So when a person doing that transcribing comes across uh, um, an actual uh, record of uh, a bird, they can put that in those boxes at the bottom and that can um, they can add as many rows as they need. So if the, he saw a single bird, then they could put that in there keep adding rows if we saw a different species and so on. Um, so yeah, it allows, I guess, all that information about biodiversity to be, to be drawn out of those um, uh, often quite lengthy and journal entries. And probably in the last couple of years, the rise in popularity of camera trap images on Digivol um, has been something that has got a little bit of press and um, from looking at those images, you see why. Um, there's a few elements to this for our volunteers to get involved with. Um, that might be just a simple animal identification and numbers of animals in those images. Um, it might be questions about animal behavior. Uh, volunteers are contributing to studies on critically endangered species around Australia, um, predominantly. Um, and, and more recently, um, there's been a quite a few projects set up that are in relation to the recovery of bushfire impacted environments, um, which is really, it's, yeah, gives volunteers an opportunity to get involved and do something a little bit hands-on where, where otherwise they might not feel they could. 
Um, and yeah, obviously scientists are understanding the impacts of bushfire and biodiversity on biodiversity and ecosystems. Um, and that goes to a lot of other different areas as well, such as climate change and, and animal behavior. Um, what does a camera trap project look like? Uh, here's an example of koala drinkers. Um, this was a New South Wales Department of Primary Industries and Environment project. Um, they were had the koala drinkers out in Canada, um, and they had some cameras set on those drinkers to try and understand what animals were using those drinkers, and whether it was koalas or more. Um, and as you can see here, there's a little visitor to one of those drinking stations. So they were capturing all of that data around what animals and what species were benefiting from the um, the use of these watering stations out in Gunnedah during the drought in particular. Okay, so stepping away from the projects for a minute, I guess there's a, a really big element of Digivol that revolves around the volunteers. And, and at the moment, um, we've got a little over 9,000 registered volunteers from around the world, um, which is quite remarkable um, when you think about it. And over the last 10 years, there's been more than 3 million tasks completed. And for those who are citizen science buffs out there, yes, we do experience the traditional citizen science long tail, um, meaning that a small number of volunteers do a large portion of the work. Um, the top 1% of our, of our volunteers actually contribute 62% of the data generated on Digivolt. But I guess COVID brought about a lot of challenges for society, um, but being an online platform for crowdsourcing, we really benefited from those conditions of people being at home and um, spending time on their computers and looking for things to do. Um, so in 2020 alone, we had 3,841 new volunteers sign up to Digifol. And if you have a look at this bar graph, you can see there there's um, those yellow columns are standing pretty tall above anything that has happened in the past for Digivol. That can also be said for the number of transcriptions that we completed in 2020. Um, again, those yellow columns stand very tall above what's happened in the past on the Digivol platform. This can also be attributed to the rise of the, um, the wildlife spotter projects as well. Um, so those transcriptions are much quicker. I don't want to say easier because I think less complex is probably the right, right way to describe them in that you're not transcribing multiple fields. You're generally looking for an animal in an image. Um, so yeah, the, the rise of the popularity of those projects and, and of course we had multiple um, wildlife spotter projects um, being transcribed on Digivol throughout 2020. Um, with the um, Save Our Species program at the New South Wales government um, being responsible for the vast majority of those. Um, so obviously, like I say there, there's a sharp, sharp increase since lockdown and there was more than 30 projects live simultaneously. So if you look at the site now, usually there's somewhere between 10 and 20, um, but there was 30 projects at a time and, and it was really um, humming along the website. That's for sure. Um, a bit of a breakdown of what happened in 2020. Uh, we had a 287 specimen label expeditions and a little over 200,000 transcriptions, um, 784 field note expeditions with about 60,000 transcriptions. And like I mentioned, the camera trap expeditions were quite um, popular with over 700 of those and, and a, um, yeah, creeping up towards 4 million transcriptions on those, on those wildlife projects. But if you dig a little bit deeper into that data, um, you can see that wild camera traps account for the vast majority of transcriptions. Um, when you look a little bit closer, you can see that actually it was those field note, um, those field note style transcriptions, the diaries um, and, the, and the registers that people were working on. It's a really uh, um, time consuming task. Um, and that was actually the most time spent by our volunteers um, 
and our volunteers spent nearly 100,000 hours in 2020 um, transcribing things on the Digipol platform, which is just, yeah, remarkable number of hours um, of volunteer labour. Okay, so enough about the stats and all of those kinds of things. I uh, might move on to some examples of, of institutions and, and projects that are available on Digivol. So um, like I mentioned, it's not just the Australian Museum using the platform. Um, there is a number of other institutions around the world. Uh, and one of those institutions is the New York Botanic Garden, um, their herbarium. And they're looking at getting a lot of their herbarium specimens and their labels transcribed um, so that they can um, extract that data and use it for their research. Um, so a few examples for them. Uh, there's a tree fern project in the past that was quite popular. Um, they do air plants to pineapples, bromeliads, which a lot of people in Australia would be familiar with. And then a most recent one, which I'm just fascinated by, and I really like that image, is the, the Epiphytes, um, Guardians of the Canopy, they call this project, which is just looking at all the um, epiphytic plants, I guess, that are up in the canopy, um, which is just fascinating to explore. Um, what's really great about these New York Botanic Gardens projects is, is the connection that you can get with the collection team. Um, they are really open to questions and feedback um, they use the forum on Digivol really well and you can, you can really um, yeah, talk to the team and, and other volunteers and find out lots of information about the plants and the people who collected them. Um, they, they maintain a really strong dialogue with the community of volunteers involved with their projects. So it's a really great example of doing transcription well, I think. Um, and just as an organisation, they run some really great workshops and open days for volunteers too. Um, an example from our museum at the Australian Museum, uh, we have the paleontology collection involved. Uh, it's quite an interesting um, element of Digifol, but the collection consists of specimens of fossils, invertebrates, vertebrates and plants, um, mostly from around Australia. Um, but our collection has particular strengths in the mammals and fossil fish section. Um, you might be thinking, what on earth can we transcribe relating to fossils on Digivol? Um, we're actually working on a project right now that is, uh, we call it data fossil. Um, it's utilising citizen science to help determine the age and environmental characteristics of fossil sites around Australia. Um, so there's a, a number of fossil sites and, and we're going to hold a webinar on this, on this project specifically next week where you'll find out more. But um, yeah, there is some really great um, information to be garnered from taking um, images using a scanning electron microscope and identifying the, the microscopic pollen that is um, within those images. Um, the data will provide scientists with information about abundance um, and the variety of um, pollen and, and microfossils found on sites. Um, for a bit of context there, you, that image is of uh, pollen and it's 40 microns in width. And so that um, is just 0.04 of a millimetre. So you can imagine how many images we can take of a single um, specimen and how long that would take to actually transcribe all that information. So volunteers have been involved in that and um, yeah, it's showing some promising results already. Uh, a really great wildlife spotter project, Bush Heritage Australia have been involved in Digivol for a while, um, but more recently we've been talking about getting a few more reserves involved and um, they're putting up, they're working on getting some more expeditions online as we speak. Um, but they do some great work in, in conservation um, of unique landscapes around Australia. Um, and I'm sure you've all heard of them and, and follow their work. Um, I won't talk too much about them, just to say that this is the cute and cuddly side of Digivol. Um, there's some really interesting animals and, and some really great um, 
snapshots of the biodiversity that, that exists out there in the Australian environment. Um, and this is a really great way to see it um, in um, places, I guess, otherwise you may not be able to, to visit. So a lot of the reserves getting involved are over in Western Australia and, and outback South Australia. Um, so yeah, it's a really unique way to connect to the Australian environment um, in those areas of the country. Um, and more recently, the museum is also putting up some entomology um, projects um, with COVID restrictions starting to ease. Our lab is starting to get back into full swing. Um, they've got their work cut out for them uh, with nearly 1.7 million specimens in the entomology collection at the museum and only 20% so far have been digitised. Uh, there's going to be a lot of work ahead of us in transcribing the information from those labels and, and photographing all of those specimens. So um, our lab is in full swing now. And just today I opened our first expedition on Digivol um, that is, uh, yeah, a flies expedition. Um, doing a little bit of research on those flies just to write the description for this project. Um, it's, it's really fascinating to see um, the variation in colour and, and habit and what these um, flies get up to. So, yeah, I recommend jumping on and checking out some of these really unique specimens that the Australian Museum is, is lucky enough to have and, and supporting the digitisation of that. Um, and more recently, I think um, it's important that Digivol has been involved in supporting some community organisations to get um, some content online. So um, it's, it's really great to see um, organisations such as Wandiali Restoration Trust come on board. Um, this is the neck of the woods of the ACT um, in the Malongolo Range there around the Murrumbidgee River. Um, at their sanctuary, um, they, are, they have a range of camera traps put out to monitor the wildlife um, and those um, images are ending up on Digivol and getting transcribed by the volunteers. So this is a fantastic way to see community organisations benefiting from the work that we do. Um, and it's nice that um, I guess some of these organisations don't have the resources of, of government bodies to, to get this work done. So it's really great um, for us to be able to offer that. Um, resource to the community. And the same can be said for um, Blue Derby Wild, who recently came on board as well, just in the last month. Um, they're a grassroots community group working to protect forests in, in Tasmania. Um, and again, another way to see some really unique Australian wildlife. Um, their cameras catch, capture lots of things. Obviously, a lot of paddy melons, but also um, there's a chance of a, a Tassie devil and and a quoll and that, that sort of thing popping up on those kind of cameras. Okay, so I guess there's unlimited possibilities on Digivol. Um, here's, a, I guess, a name drop slide. These are all the institutions who uh, are using Digivol. Um, and it, I guess it shows you the variety of projects um, from local councils and for the history buffs who are interested in that local government history, there's lots of um, um, transcribing to be done for them. Um, the founders and su survivors and libraries Tasmania have been putting up some really fascinating stuff um, around, there's been, I think I call it, the best description is if you're into true crime podcasts, you might be into this kind of stuff with a lot of court case transcription and, and punishment transcription for crime and things like that. Um, but yeah, like you can see there's some really great um, herbariums from around the country and indeed the world and, and some, a range of other um, charities and things using the website as well. And all of these um, institutions have some really, really great projects achieving some um, yeah, great outcomes for the environment and, and for their research. Okay, so I guess the next step is to get involved. Um, there's no better time than now. This month, this week now, the next four days is actually We Dig Bio, um, which is an event, it's a global event that um, looks to get people engaged in um, digitising bio collections. Uh, 
and Digivol has been a strong part of that, being involved in digitisation around the world. Um, and the next four days, you'll see lots of new and interesting projects go up on Digivol. All you have to do is register through the ALA um, and through digivol.org. Um, have a look at the projects that are there, see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Um, have a read of some tutorials and guides. There's lots of really helpful information online to, to help you get started um, and then start transcribing. Um, it, it really is a fascinating way to, to connect with some interesting um, biodiversity and collections around the world. Um, so yeah, I recommend anyone jump on and have a look if you want to dip your toes in the water and do some wildlife spotter, um, go for it. If you want to get down into some um, interesting data crunching, then yeah, get into some transcription of, of labels and things like that. Um, yeah, there's definitely plenty to be learned out there. Um, obviously a plug for our conversation on not just our forums online, but on our social media as well. Um, you can find us at AM Digivol on Twitter and Facebook. We're always posting about interesting things that we find and, and interesting projects that are hitting our platform. Um, and yeah, so you can always keep in touch with us via those platforms as well. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned earlier, if, if you know me, I love talking about citizen science. So this, I guess, is the opportunity to, to open it up to questions and really um, start a conversation now. If you've got any questions about Digivol and the platform and how it works or um, yeah, about any of the projects I've mentioned, then um, yeah, please ask your questions now.